Hey, it's the Scott. Uh, I just finished reading this book, uh, Rogue Trader the Omnibus. It follows the story of Lucian, the Rogue Trader, and his family. Uh, Lucian is such a successful Rogue Trader that he's like on the council of the High Lords of Terra. So he's a pretty big deal. Um, his job is to like explore space. Uh, make deals. He's basically a dip diplomat and explorer at the same time. Uh, and because he's like on the council of high lords, everything he has is like really, really powerful. Like his ship is really powerful. Like everything he has is like super, super powerful. So he's a very strong guy. And he's like hundreds of years old. Uh, I can't remember exact his exact age. He only mem mentions it once. So, yeah. Um, I I didn't like this book at first, especially like the first story, uh, which is uh, Rogue Star. Rogue Star is a very political government heavy story uh, it does get interesting like 60 pages in um, but once you get past like the first 60 pages the rest of the book becomes really really interesting uh, there's a lot of lore in this book um, pretty much every page I learned something new about Warhammer so if you like lore, this is a great book to read. Um, I would say half this book is about politics and the government. And I would say half this book is about the Tao. So if you like Tao, uh, this is a great book. Um, this story here Ambition Knows No Bounds. Uh, or it might be Star of, uh, Star of Demicles. One of these. Uh, it's actually the first time humans made contact with the Tau. So it's a story about the first contact of uh, you know, the Tau. People were trying to figure them out. Um, but even during first contact well, I should I should say this. Um, it's the first contact after like six thousand years. They contacted them before, but six thousand years later, you know they're all advanced. You know they all got got the battle suits and all that. Um, the first time they meet the Tau, they already know English, and they're already very well spoken and very good diplomats, and they're already very good. Uh, politicians. So the first meeting goes pretty well because talking to them is pretty easy. Um, and then it just goes on from there, you know. So it's. Uh, I'll, I'll review every story real quick. So Rogue Star is pretty average. Um, nothing crazy happens. Um, the only, the only thing that happens that's kind of funny is these two lords of two different planets just give themselves up to the Tau. These lords are Imperium planets, and they've been Imperium for thousands of years and have all these cultures and trade routes. They just happily gave up their government to the Tau. Just... Because it's how promised to help them with the rivalry. Basically, each lord wanted to kill each other, and the Tau promised to help out. So they both like sabotage each planet. Um, so that was pretty cool. The Tau, you know, promised to help each planet, so they sabotage both of them, and it kind of goes downhill from there. 
uh, Lucian finds out about this, and since he's from the Council of Terra, he got pretty mad, and a lot of action happens from there. It's an alright story. Cold Trade? Uh, Lucian's daughter, Brill, goes to the swamp planet, and she uh, finds this guy who's heavily augmented, and he's like a bandit leader, and it's on a planet where there's no laws, uh, there's orcs there, beast men, uh, just, it's basically Necromunda, but it's a swamp planet, there's no laws. And she tries to trade with this bandit. Uh, she tries to give... Uh, this bandit has a... Eldar necklace. That's supposed to be really important. And... Brill gave the guy a ring that lets him transform himself. And because he likes augmentations... Uh, he wants this ring. But things kind of go south. Because... Uh, the guy's crazy, and uh, a lot of action happens from there. Uh, Brill survives, so it kind of. I'll tell you now that Brill survives Cold Trade. But uh, it's a really short story; it's only like 40 pages, and it's really good. Um, the Swamp Planet's really interesting. Just a planet where anyone can do anything. It's pretty good. Uh, Star Demicles. I think Star Demicles is the first contact with Tau. Ambition Knows No Bounds was simply the warp jump uh, to the Tau planet. They spent a whole section of the book talking about the warp jump. Uh, so the first contact with Tau. Uh, it was pretty interesting, but not, you know, more politics stuff. Nothing really happened in this one. Uh, but the government declared war on the Tau. Uh, they didn't know anything about them. They didn't care that they spoke English. Uh, they just wanted to annihilate them. Now, the Tau have their own language. But they speak in English in front of people. Oh, Commander Farsight is in this book, which is a pretty big Tau character. So yeah, a lot of Tau uh, lore. Vision Knows No Bounds is where uh, Lucian gets this council of government, and it's like one of everything. Uh, a tech priest, a navigator, uh, a bunch of generals, some inquisitors. You know, pretty high-ranking people. And they do this warp jump. And, uh, because they've been traveling for so long, and because they're at the age, edge of space, near the Eye of Terra, or, yeah, uh, their ship gets a demon. Uh, slash demon. Uh, and everyone got something different. Uh, Lucian's son got like a sirens who tried to trick the crewmen which caused in which caused uh, hundreds of deaths uh, Lucian got like a demon prince Sunesh demon prince and it was just a very violent very fast you know try to corrupt people and try to kill everything so this is so Ambition Knows No Bounds is a really good um, demon, demon story, warp jump story. And the book, uh, it really follows Lucian, who's captain of the ship, and his navigator, who's in charge of the warp jumps. These two guys uh, team up together to take out the demon. So, most of the story actually falls around the Navigator. Uh, if you don't know, Navigators have three eyes. And they're mutants. But they're so good at traveling the warp 
that the Imperium uh, hires them, even though they're mutants. So this is a really good... It's not really a rogue trader story. It's more of a um, navigator story. So it's really good. Um, Savage Scars is the Tau War. And it's awesome. You got Inquisitor stuff going on. There's like five chapters of Space Marines from each uh, Legion. Uh, the book centers around the White Scars. Uh, who was so fast that the Tau couldn't really shoot him. Uh, not about marker lights. Um, uh, and what's great about this story is pretty much every Tau unit on the board game is mentioned in this book. Uh, it's... Let's see. It starts out at 491... I think it ends at 780, I think, it's like 783, so it's a pretty, it's over 300 pages, uh, almost 400 pages, so it's, it's a pretty good book, um, No, 300 pages, that's right. Anyways, so if you like Tao, this is a really good Tao story. And there's five chapters of Space Marines, and it talks about them a lot. Uh, so if you like Space Marines stuff, this is really good too. Um, it really goes to show you how powerful Space Marines were. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is before prim uh, the Primaris Space Marines. Uh, because it mentions Iron Hands with their Iron Hands. They don't have that. I'm guessing this is before the Primaris. I'm guessing they're first, firstborn Marines. And uh, just five chapters of, of uh, firstborn Marines were just... They, first, they didn't know what the Tau were or the crew were. And after like 10 hours of fighting, they just... The Space Marines were able to completely adapt to them. And they started winning every fight. The first 10 hours, it was like a slaughter. They lost every fight. But after that, they, they got enough information to start winning every fight. So it really goes to show you how powerful Space Marines are. It's a really good Space Marine story. And it's a really good Tau story at the same time. And there's also a bit of politics in it. And some Inquisitor stuff. Um, at the end of the story... Uh, it mentions Tyranids, and it's actually the first mention of Tyranids. Like, the people don't know what, what Tyranids are, and they have to explain it to them. This was like the first contact, first contact with Tyranids. So not only is this the first contact with Tau, it's also the first contact with Tyranids. So this is a pretty important book. I'm kind of surprised it's, uh, all this lore is in a pirate book, a uh, rogue trader book. But yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty important story. Uh, Lucian is, is very likable. He's a very likable character. Uh, he just figures out a way to get out of everything, you know, of his experience. Uh, it's interesting seeing a human just outplay all these superhumans and aliens uh, because of his experience and his you know ability to ma manipulate people so that's pretty cool uh, his children are less likable um, they said they had they've been on like hundreds of missions too so they, they have experience but they're just, I don't know, they're not as likable. And they constantly rely on Lucian for help. So. Uh, but Lucian's likable. And he's on, like, like every page. Lucian's in, you see, there's Lucian right there. 
he's in like every page, so I think he's likable. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend the story. Um, and I think that's it for that one. I decided to record this, because I am returning it to the library in a couple days. Um, I also returned Wolfbane and Demon World. Demon World, uh, sucked. Uh, I, the Space Marines don't show up to like, the last chapter. And it sucks, because the, the Space Marines are on, like, the, the front cover. Um, and I read Wolfbane. I had to skip through it, because, uh, I basically waited too long, and I had to read it one day. But, uh, Wolf Bane was pretty good. The middle part drags on very long. Uh, the middle part is like a vision of Lehman Russ fighting Horus. And it drags on forever. And then he actually does fight Horus. Lehman Russ fights Horus. And that part is cool. But, uh, yeah, it's... I would say the first, like, eight chapters have a lot of important stuff going on. But after that, it just drags and it's not a good story anymore. But yeah, I'll work on... I'll be working on these stories next. But yeah, um, that's my quick review of the book. I recommend it. Um, it's got a lot of alien stuff, space marine stuff, political stuff. It's got a lot of action in it. Really a little bit of everything. Um, it doesn't have any... Oh no, it does have Garzman stuff. Garzman show up, um, in the war against Tau. So there's some Garzman stuff in there too. So yeah, it's really good. And they mentioned Katachan. I think one of the generals is a Katachan general. So, yeah, it's a really good story. I recommend it. Alright, that's the end of the video. Alright, thanks.